Welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we will discuss the full wave rectifier having an LC filter. We will see how we can generate these plots in the simulator for this specific circuit for this example. Of course, we will work out everything in the calculations and also verify these in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Okay, this is our circuit we will consider. We have here an input voltage sinusoidal of 100 sine 120 pi t. So we have an amplitude of 100 and a frequency of 60 Hertz. The load is initially 8 ohms and the L and the C for the LC filter values are shown here. Now we would like to calculate the output voltage, the average output voltage, the average output current. And we will also repeat this for a different load of 28 ohms. So we will do again the output voltage and the output current. Okay, let's see first the waveform for the inductor, which is this inductor current for continuous and discontinuous current mode. So you see in the continuous current mode that the current in the inductor is always above zero. In the discontinuous current mode, as the name implies, it is discontinuous because it has some value here and then it is zero. And it has some value again here and it is again zero. So this is the discontinuous current mode. And for this operation, we will need a different analysis. So first, the uh, solutions and in our calculations, first step, we'll look at the conduction mode for our circuit. Now for that, we need to see if this condition is met. And for this, if this condition is met, that means we have a continuous current mode operation. Otherwise, it is a discontinuous current mode operation. So we need to check that the 3 times the omega L over R is lower than 1. So let's see if that is the case in the first uh, situation. So we have 3 times 120 pi, which is omega times 0 0.01, so 10 millihenries, over the resistor of 8 ohms that will result in approximately 1.41, which is larger than 1. So that means we are in the continuous current mode or CCM, and the current in the inductor is continuous. Okay, so we can calculate this as we did in the previous example for the full wave rectifier because. This current, the average current here, is the same as the average current in the load. So the average current of the inductor will be the average current of the load of the resistor because the average current of the capacitor is zero. Now let's start first with the average output voltage. We have seen in the previous example that this is 2 times the Vm, which is our peak value of the input voltage, over pi. We have now 100, so 2 times 100 over pi will give us 63.66 volts. Now the average output volt current is determined using Ohm's law, so we know the resistor, we know the output, average output voltage, so we can use Ohm's law, just divide by the resistor value. In this case, you get here 7.958 amps. Now this is, again as node, uh, also the same current here for the inductor in average value so it is again 7.958 amps. Consider now the situation where we have the resistor change from 8 ohms to 28 ohms. So what happens? Now we'll see if that changes also the conduction mode. Now R is 28 ohms. Let's check the conduction mode again. So we need to fulfill this in order to stay in the CCM. Now if I look at the calculation here again this is only the change here which is from 8 to 28 will give us now 0 0.404 so almost 0 0.4 which is definitely less than 1 that means we have a DCM so discontinuous current mode so the inductor current is not continuous anymore but discontinuous now we can use uh, the graph here which is a normalized output with LC filter for this circuit specifically and you can see here the ratio of 3 omega L over R and also here the normalized value of output voltage average over the peak value of the input. Now in our case we can see that we need to look at 0 0.4 approximately here in the horizontal axis so we can see that this is this. Now we can see what the intersection is with this blue line that will result in this one which is approximately 0 0.75. What does this mean? That means actually this ratio VO over VM must be 0 0.75. So the average output voltage looking at the graph will result in 0 0.75 for this situation. So that means the VO over VM is 0 0.75 or VO will be then 0 0.75 times VM. 
Now, since Vm is this, which is just the peak value of your input source voltage, so it will result in 0 0.75 times 100, so 75 volts. So we expect that our average value, average output uh, voltage will be 75 volts. Now, for the average output current, we can use again Ohm's law. So V over R, in this case 28 ohms and 75 volts. So we get here 2.678 amps. So much, much larger, uh, smaller than the original situation as the current. Okay, now we have here now the simulation result. First, we start with a simulating circuit for a resistor of 8 ohms. This is, the, by the way, the summary of our results. This is the simulating circuit. You see here the voltage source, full wave rectification, the inductor, the capacitor, so LC filter, and here we have our load 8 ohms. We also see some measurements which goes to the scope here. We will see that shortly in the next slide. First, let, let's look at the values we have for this situation. So we have here the average load voltage which is 63.66 volts, which is exactly as we have it. And the average resistor current or the load current is 7.95 amps as we have it here. So this is all as expected. Now looking at the uh, simulating circuit for the 28 ohms, so it only changes here just the resistor. Now let's go one by one. You see here first the uh, average load voltage, which is 75.35, which is close to the 75 volts we have calculated. We see here the average current or average load resistor current of 2.69, which is also close to 2.68 amps here. So we can say this is also as expected. Okay, now let's look at the graphs specifically. In this case, we'll look at the resistor of 8 ohms. This is still continuous current mode. You see here the source voltage in red. The, uh, the green one is our load voltage. The yellow one is our load current. You see here the average value around that value for the load voltage is 63.73 volts. And the average value for our output current is 7.95 amps, so as we have calculated also here. There are more labels here in order to also discuss that in great detail. You see here the 108 volts, 108 volts peak output voltage and 13.5 amps is the peak output current. So there are, those are much, much larger values than the steady state values. What does it mean now in order to uh, build your circuit in actual uh, realization. We need to also consider the peak values for our uh, voltages and the currents for the selection of our components. It's also the same for the capacitor current because the capacitor current in the steady state situation is much much smaller than for the peak because peak value here is 30.9 amps so almost 31 amps. So if you select your capacitor for your LC filter just looking at your steady state values, the current values, your capacitor will not do the job probably because we have in the transient situation a much larger current. Which is also the same for the inductor because in the transient it is much smaller and we look at the peak value here at the 37.3 amps which is again way above the values we see here. So again this is something you need to consider when you actually realize your components in the circuit. Now, looking at the zoomed-in version for resistor of 8 ohms, this is again the source voltage and then continuing the rest. You see the peak-peak value, so the maximum and the minimum values for the load voltage and the load current. Here you see approximately peak-peak is this, this is 68.3 maximum and 60.9 minimum. So approximately at the average of 64 volts, so this is expected. Expect. This is approximately 8.5. Uh, amps and this is 7.6 amps so average is also as we have calculated here. Okay now let's look at the steady state values for the situation where the resistor has changed from 8 to 28 ohms. Now we are in the discontinuous current mode you see again the source. Again you see here in green the load voltage, the yellow is our load current, capacitor current in pink and here in the light blue the inductor current. 
Now you see here the average value for the load voltage and the average value for the load current. You see here 75.1 volts, so close to what we have, and also 2.68 amps, also close to what we have. Again, we have other labels which are also very important. We have here a peak value for our output voltage, which is 123 volts, much, much larger than the steady state value. So also important to consider this for the the peak output current we have here 4.41 amps which again much larger current than the steady state situation again for the capacitor and the inductor we have the capacitor current here of 34.6 amps so much larger than this value here in the steady state so in transient we see here more aggressive current values and also for the inductor you see here 36.7 amps approximately when this is in a transient situation. We see here a peak value of this inductor current. So again, for selection for your capacitor inductor, you need to consider these extreme situations also. Now let's also zoom in in this situation where you see here again the peak value for the load voltage, minimum and maximum. Again, the average is approximately 75, looking at 78 and 73. The maximum and the minimum for the inductor, I mean for the resistor current or load current is also having an average of approximately 2.68 here. So again, as expected. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.